Hello and welcome to our video presentation on the characterization of natural organic matter in drinking water. My name is Junior Sedi Sergemfi and I'm a PhD student at the University of Lille in France. In this presentation, we will have a brief overview of norm, then proceed to some norm classification and some currently available characterization technique. Norm, as can be seen from this simplified image, is a very complex mixture of different organic compounds that are present in the environment, fresh water in our case. It consists of several functional groups and compounds, only a few of which are identifiable. Therefore, to be able to study this complex structure, we need to break it down into broad classes based on origin, chemical formula or structure, and polarity. Now let's take a closer look at each of these classes and further break them down, starting from the origin. Norm can originate from natural or anthropogenic sources. Example of anthropogenic sources are runoff water and agricultural urban or industrial waste. Natural sources are distinguished based on where norms are formed. Alloctonous norms are seen to come from distant places and may have been carried to their present location by agents of erosion. Autochthonous norms are however produced in situ. Now let's look at the second class based on chemical formula or structure. There is a fraction of norm whose chemical structure is known and is referred to as non-humic substance. Other fraction with unknown chemical structure is referred to as humic substance. However, we can further break this fraction down based on molecular weight of its components. Humans, seen as the heaviest components, can have size ranging from hundreds of thousands to millions of thousands. Humic acids from tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands. And the smallest, which is fluvic acids, between a thousand and tens of thousands. The last class we will look at is its polarity. The components of norm can either be polar, non-polar or intermediate, often called transphilic. Polar fractions consist of hydrophilic compounds such as aliphatic carbons, proteins, sugars, and amino acids. Non-polar fractions, on the other hand, consist of hydrophobic compounds such as aromatic carbons, conjugated double bonds, phenolic compounds. Now let's see some available characterization techniques. The components of norm contains atoms and groups that are responsible for the color of norm. Thus, it is possible to measure the absorption property of norm by passing ultraviolet light through it as a specific wavelength. You can see from this image three water samples with different concentrations of norm represented by the water grids, the color grids. When UV light at 254 nanometers is passed through it, part of this light is absorbed. The higher the norm concentration, the higher the light absorption. The different absorption intensities are registered in the form of a spectra as can be seen on the far right. We can equally measure the total organic carbon of norm with a TOC analyzer. Here, the sample is first mineralized and then oxidized to convert the organic carbon to carbon dioxide, which absorbs light near infrared region. Another useful characterization technique is chromatography. The type of chromatography is defined by the state of its mobile phase. Thus, if the element is gas, it is referred to as gas chromatography. And you guessed right, liquid chromatography has a liquid element. The elution and the retention time of the sample in liquid chromatography is a function of its mobile and stationary phase. There are several types of liquid chromatography depending on the method of solute separation at the stationary phase. Here, we see a current separation method uh, for characterization of norm that is based on size exclusion, where the larger molecules are prevented from penetrating particle pores. This is made possible because of the different particle pore sizes, as can be seen. Here, we see a sample containing three different uh, particle sizes. Because the larger particle with a size of 10,000 Dalton is prevented from entry, it's elusive first, followed by the intermediate, and lastly, the smallest particle with a size of 300 Daltons because it spends more time in the pores. Here we see a chromatogram of a drinking water sample where the norm has been characterized into five uh, classes based on their sizes. The largest fraction, referred to as biopolymers, have sizes over 20,000 Daltons. Humic substance and building blocks have sizes about 1,000 Daltons and 350 Daltons respectively. The smallest fraction, lower molecular weight acid and mo lower molecular weight neutrals have sizes below 350 Dalton. This technique is very useful in assessing the efficiency of water treatment processes and methods. Here we see a chromatogram of raw water sample identified by both UV 
an organic carbon detector. After the first treatment by coagulation, we can observe a substantial decrease in the largest norm fraction, notably the humic substance. An additional treatment step by ultrafiltration sees very little improvement across all fractions. In conclusion, it is evident that the characterization of norm is very complex study. There are several other techniques and characterization methods like res uh, resin fractionation, biological tests, and elemental com composition. The different methods are chosen based on the factors like cost and then the information that is needed. Thank you very much for your attention.